This video is brought to you by KiwiCo. Okay, it's fine. It's you. Plenty of time. Oh, <laughs> hi. Uh, you just caught me having an existential crisis underneath my workbench. You see, I'm working on an animatronic claptrap from Borderlands, and it's it's totally going well. Yeah, it's it's great. It's not like I spent a month redesigning a shoulder only to realize that it fundamentally didn't work, rendering the custom motion capture device that I built for him uh, totally useless. That would be a setback. Today we're talking about progress and successes, and specifically four separate things that I think are actually going to work. Specifically, his eye, his voice, his antenna, and his disk drive. So let's talk about that. Claptrap has an antenna that lights up towards the tip, and in theory, it should retract into his head, but that interferes with his internal components in my design, so instead, I opted to have a folding antenna. For the tip, I 3D printed this clear resin piece that threads into the top of the antenna. To make it light up, I'm using one of these single RGB LED breakouts. The main antenna piece is an aluminum tube, so that I can stuff an LED towards the top and feed the wires out towards the bottom. It glows, but I'd hoped for more light out the sides. I'll definitely have to play around with this design. Now in order to make it move, I'm using this Dynamixel servo motor. This is a smart servo that can be daisy chained, and I'm using a lot of them in Claptrap. They can be back driven and have built in position sensors so I can easily see what positions I need to send to the antenna to make it rise up and also fold down and anywhere in between. If you have or are a curious young mind that is interested in learning more about robotics and animatronics like this, I recommend checking out KiwiCo, today's sponsor. KiwiCo is on a mission to provide kids of all ages a creative way to engage with STEM principles via their monthly crates, hands-on activities that encourage critical thinking and enable creative expression. Now, based on my own interests, they sent me the robotics and animatronics crates, which, surprise, surprise. The parts inside are well-made, easy to assemble, and don't require any special tools. If I were a kid, I would have fun with these for months, reinventing and reimagining things with the parts supplied. Now, as someone who's worked at Makerspaces and with a lot of youth programs over the years, I can say with confidence that there is no better way to get kids excited and invested about design and engineering than by getting them building hands-on projects like this. Some of my own most formative memories as a wee engineer were building projects that I got at book fairs or science museums. And I would have been over the moon if something like KiwiCo existed back then. So if you know that exact special bright mind who loves building, tinkering, and creative expression, and you think they would enjoy this, go ahead and go to kiwico.com forward slash Mr. Volt, and use code Mr. Volt, and you'll get 50% off your first crate. Thanks again to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. Claptrap's eye is basically a camera lens shape with a glowing blue light within the lens. It modulates slightly when he's talking and can move around, but that's about it. In order to make it move, I've mounted it to this dual-axis Dynamixel that allows it to pan and tilt. This mounts to a larger rear shroud piece that hides the internal mechanisms. The light comes from this white LED that is mounted to a thin plate with threads. There are matching large threads inside the eye so that I can dial in the distance to get the exact spot size I want. I want his eye to be pretty bright, which means the LED will be drawing a lot of current. More current than the pins on my microcontroller can supply, so it's actually switched on and off via a MOSFET. This is major overkill, but I had a bunch of these MOSFETs lying around, and now when I play a voice line, his eye modulates. You know what? This plan is so good, I'm going to give you a sporting chance and turn off the neurotoxin. I'm joking, of course. Goodbye. I'll explain more in depth when I talk about the voice hardware, but I think the effect is pretty interesting. Claptrap has a loud voice, and thankfully he doesn't have any weird photorealistic lips, just this little lured vent in the front, which is presumably his mouth. Now, in order to give him the power of speech, I have slapped a 5 watt speaker behind his faceplate. This is powered by this Wii amp, which is connected via I2S to this Teensy 3.5 microcontroller. The audio clips are stored as WAV files on a microSD card. For right now, I can just trigger them via serial. Now, the Teensy platform has a pretty powerful audio library, so I'm using that to play sound effects. To modulate the brightness of his eye, I'm using this built-in peak meter function. The eye has a base level brightness, and the peak meter modulates the brightness on top of that to get just the right effect when he talks. Howdy. Claptrap's disk drive is one of his most iconic features. It's mostly just a faceplate with a white warning text and a red label that extends and retracts. 
I feel like he actually does put a disc or echo log in there at some point, but I couldn't find a clip of that. If you know where I could find that clip, let me know. Now, in my design, the disk drive is largely one piece. To move it in and out, I have it attached to a crank arm, which is driven by a little Dynamixel servo. The disk drive carriage itself rides on top of two itty-bitty linear rails, which are insanely overkill. But look how freaking cute these are! Did I spend $20 on them? Yes. Do I regret that? No. I'm working hard to finish Claptrap before Borderlands 4 comes out in mid-September, so subscribe to see me faceplant across the finish line.